G'day, I'm Paul Frazier. I'm leader of a project that's monitoring environmental water down the, the Guida River. We're standing here at, at Palamalawa on, on the, the banks of the, the mighty Guida. Right here, the Guida's at its maximum. It's about 50 metres across there. Reasonable swim if you want to get in and have a look. And it's a single main channel that, that's coming through. And uh, in case you didn't know, Palamalawa is about 30 k's to the east of Moree. We'd like to uh, take you through this little video that's going to try and hopefully explain the project and um, outline what's, what's been going on in the system and, and how the, the system's actually responded to environmental flows. The Guida River system in northern New South Wales starts just to the west of Armidale in the New England Tablelands before flowing north into Copeton Dam, the system's largest impoundment. Copeton Dam regulates about 50% of all the flow in the Kawada system. It is operated by Water New South Wales to deliver water downstream for irrigated agriculture and stock and domestic use. It also stores environmental water, which can be released to provide for the river channels and wetlands downstream. From Copeton Dam, the river runs to the west, going through the towns of Bingara, Gravesend and Palamalawal before reaching Tarilawuri Weir. We've just come a little bit further downstream on, on the Guida. This is about 10 k's to the west of, of where we were. And uh, down that main trunk is, is the Guida stream itself, the Guida River itself. And if we look a little bit just to the left there, we can see where it breaks off into the Mihai. And we're at Tarilaroi Weir, I should say. A little bit further to the west here, the Guida breaks into at least eight much smaller river systems. And then from then on, it really changes from being this large single channel stream to being a large flat wetland area that spreads across with water that runs across it in a number of small channels and into a lot of other smaller wetland areas. It is these areas west of Mallory in the lower Guida system that are the target of environmental water and is where our sampling for the monitoring program focuses. In the past several years, environmental water has been put down channels such as the Corolla Creek, Gingham Watercourse and the lower Guida and Mehai rivers to improve water connection, especially during dry times, and also to stimulate breeding and recruitment of native fish. In fact, back in 2014, water flowed down the full length of the Mihai River and into the Barwon River to the west, near Colorenebrai. This water kept on going all the way down the Barwon River, running the Barwarana Fishway, and ended up just past Burke on the Darling River. The wetland areas within the lower Guida system are also an important target for environmental water. These wetlands have been greatly reduced in area through agricultural development, with the remaining areas being critical refuges for wetland vegetation species, as well as a wide range of wetland animals, such as water birds, frogs, fish, invertebrates and snakes. A team of over 20 scientists from a number of organisations are involved in the monitoring of this environmental water. The team loves to get their feet wet, measuring aspects such as water quality, invertebrates, fish, frogs, water birds and vegetation through on-ground surveys. We also have a series of remote monitoring cameras and weather stations that connect to the internet and allow us to monitor aspects such as water level and water bird activity in between field surveys. Here we are at Old Romana. This is one of the, the key target areas for the environmental water in the Guida system. Now, you can't get much of a view here and that's because the area is very, very, very flat. Out there you can see just in the background the marshes, the rushes and the wetland grasses that grow and proliferate in this area. In the first year of monitoring in this area, the, uh, the area got a reasonable amount of water and from that we had such a burst of life that we had over a million kilograms of production of tiny little zooplankton bugs. A million kilograms, that's a thousand tonnes. That's a fair bit of production from about four months of inundation from nothing to, uh, to a thousand tonnes. This production of zooplankton provided food for a range of larger wetland animals including water birds such as darters, spoonbills and pelicans and other aquatic species such as turtles. Prolonged inundation at wetland sites such as Bunol Waterbird Lagoon also help water bird species to breed with nesting observed via the remote cameras in darters, ducks and geese. Environmental water also stimulated growth of native wetland vegetation. Before the water was delivered in summer 2015, some areas such as Mamonga wetlands in the Gingham were dominated by lipia, 
the weed species shown here with white flowers. However, the environmental water stimulated the growth of native water cooch, which outcompeted the lipia, with increased cooch growth noted for the following 18 months. These are just some of the benefits we have seen by the use of environmental water in the Guaida River system. For more information on this project, as well as other environmental water monitoring projects in the Murray-Darling Basin, go to the Commonwealth Environmental Water Office's website.